Welcome to part number 19 of Gran Turismo 5 Ace Mech. This is the Moving Chicane, and today we're doing the NRA Roadster One Make Race. Now, I do have this Yuno's Roadster J Limited from the from the International B license, I believe. But I like this car too much, and I want to use it for the Roadster 4 Hours. So instead, I'm going to use the NA Special Package from 89. And I have to paint it in Marina Blue. That's my second favorite color, or probably first favorite color. National Rifle Association? Oh boy. Let's not go there, Sean. But here it is. The Yuno's Roadster. I don't know why it's called NRA. Like NR-A, I have no idea. D4F1? Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Oh yeah, it is Jamie's car. He drives an MX-5. Not red. We've reached 100 cars, boys, and we got a new horn. Beep, beep. Alright, so moving on to the amateur division. Because in the beginner series, there's no more one makes or manufacturer races here. I want to get those out of the way first. So, amateur series. And yeah, this is the next uh, one make or manufacturer event. The NRA Roadster Cup. And let's get started. Oh, yet to finna commit a 187. Oh, Channel 4! Oh, okay. I've heard I've heard of Channel 4. A lot of people talk about Channel 4 when it comes to the glory days of F1 and whatnot. Alright, Arthur, seen a bit. So another rolling start. There we go. Game is finally gone from black to gameplay. Close racing machine broke. Yeah, pretty much. The so final after on Sakuba Circuit, and let's get started. I can't wait to do the Roadster 4 Hour here. That race is actually really fun. I'm not kidding. I enjoy endurances like that. Channel 4 is with um, Coulthard, right? David Coulthard? Slamming into everybody. Not really the way I want to win this race, but whatever. Up to fourth. Oh, he's a part of Sky. Got it. I thought he was like one of the commentators for another um, organization other than Sky Sports at point. Mark Weber and a few others. Ah! Point six seconds is the gap between myself and first place. I think we'll be able to make up some of that deficit in the slower speed corners. I feel like those cars are slightly modified or they have better tires. Probably the latter. I think we gained a whole half a second in just one sector. Picking off cars one by one, I guess. What we're gonna have to do. Oh, that's the horn. How the hell do they go off track? Oh, that's the light button. Okay, it's R3. Deal. I wish I could keep the lights up. In terms of Formula 1, Daniel, I think it was speed. I don't know. I mean, I love D I, D D I love Lee Diffie, but I just felt like Varsha just had better chemistry with um, Steve Matchett and David Hobbs. Then again, I grew up with them. So it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit biased towards them because of that. 
And to a lesser extent, Varsha was kind of like our Murray Walker in the United States. He was, you know, the guy who was commentating on Formula One as like or an original broadcast team for like the longest time here. Obviously, you know, you can have your opinions on does Varsha really deserve the title of like the American Murray Walker? And maybe not, but I just it's kind of like a lack of a better comparison, you know what I mean? Yeah, Salika, no shit, man. Fucking Williams, dude. Like, what is Williams gonna have to do to get back to the top? Yeah, Chris, I agree with you. Varsha feels out of place in the Formula E um, booth. I feel like they just have him there because he's Bob Varsha, you know? And, like, I don't feel like he doesn't... He's more of an, like, like announcer than anything, which is fine, you know, because a lot of broadcast teams have that kind of announcer person before the actual commentary teams get started with the racing. But I feel like he's both, a co like, an announcer and a commentator. Which to me doesn't really make sense. It's like, let Varsha just do the pre-race stuff, points, you know, uh, transitions, whatnot, blah, blah, blah. But like, he's just there in the booth with Dario and, and, and Jack Nichols. And I just feel like he doesn't really say much. He's just like, and the Venturi car in second. Because there's not really much for him to say. He doesn't really fit in that role. He doesn't really fit in that place, you know? just kind of weird because Jack and Dario just have a really good chemistry and like they, they do a fantastic job with commentary and one more lap here at Scuba got the boys behind us Oh, really, Daniel? I just read your comment. You grew up with Sky Sports F1 coverage and David Coulthard. You find him annoying. I don't know. I never really heard much of his commentary, so I can't say. All right. See you in a bit. Five wheel. Yeah, exactly. Just kind of useless and just there because... Really? Do you know what race that was, Sean? Because I don't really remember that. Here's the thing about Formula E, because of my new job, it's been kind of hard for me to watch Formula E races. I've been, you know, I finding streams is kind of a bitch, and just the, I don't know, like, at least the first two rounds, Saudi Arabia and, and Marrakesh, I wasn't able to either stay up or get up in time. Across the line, and we win. Another pretty close race. Seven seconds between first and twelve. That's that's really good. I love how I love how twelfth place is driving another Marina Blue car, and I'm driving another Marina Blue car first and twelfth. And then from six to eleventh, it's mostly just sunburst yellow cars, which hey, that's pretty awesome if you ask me. I know I said in the beginning of the video that Marina Blue is my second favorite color. I'm lying. It's between Sunburst Yellow and Marina Blue is my favorite MX-5 color. It was Marrakesh? Okay. Yeah, I didn't get to watch the, the broadcast from Marrakesh. I only got to watch Santiago and I missed Mexico. I was working while watching Mexico and I couldn't react to the Verline Degrassi finish because work. I can't scream off the top of my lungs, but... I just kind of bit my tongue. I was like, dude, that finish was incredible. And our prize is the Mazda Kusabi concept. So we basically go from winning, I guess, an LMP style concept and B spec to winning, I don't know, like a compact hatchback, ugly looking concept car A spec. Yeah, exactly. It's the weird but okay car. 
Most races were put in the worst spot. I mean... Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I can't tell if um, the close finishes are... Like, we, we've had, what? One, two... We've had four races with really good finishes. I can't tell if that's because of the attack zone and the fan boost, or it's just the car. If they have a really good package now. But anyways, that is it for this video, guys. That's our Mazda Kasabi concept. Weird looking thing. So, next time on Gran Turismo 5 A-Spec, I believe we're doing the Lupo Cup. That's the next manufacturer slash one make of it.